Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and I realized that while I've shown off my different fingerboard mold systems over the years, I've never really done a video that focuses on how to actually make the decks. So let's do that. Obviously I'm going to be using the tools that I produce, but I'll do my best to describe the process in a way that applies to the wide variety of methods out there. Okay, so to start, let's talk materials. Good fingerboard decks, like their full-size counterparts, are made from layers of hardwood veneer. We call these individual sheets of veneer plies, and a standard layup is five plies. Three layers have the grain oriented in the long direction, we call those long grain. And two layers with the grain oriented in the short direction, which we call cross grain. And for everyone who's been asking me where I get my veneers, all I do is go onto eBay, search fingerboard veneers, and buy one of these mix packs that enterprising woodworkers out there make. If you've got a line on any actual fingerboard veneer manufacturers, I'd love to know. Hit me up, or even better, leave it down in a comment below. The next material we're gonna need for our boards is glue, and I've found that the best type of glue to use is urethane-based wood glues like Gorilla Glue. And I don't say this lightly, I hate this stuff, but it works so much better for fingerboards than the water and PVA-based glues that we use for full-size decks. You can use those glues in a pinch, but since the veneers are so thin, the moisture in the glue can cause warping and swelling, and it'll sometimes give you bad results. I'm not gonna go into finishing or deck art in this video, but if you wanna do those things, you'll need whatever art supplies you like best and something like polyacrylic to seal the wood up nice. And that's it for materials. Nice short list. Next, let's take a look at tools. The most important tool you're gonna need is your mold. This is one of the presses I produce. Mine combine the mold and clamping mechanism into one unit, but using separate molds and presses also gets great results. This press has the same street deck geometry with radial concave that I've got available in the shop, but this one is much, much better. You wanna know why? Because it has a big red stripe and is therefore cooler than all non-striped presses. This press is my personal TIE advance to all the legions of the generic TIE fighters out there. Okay, all joking aside, your mold is the piece of equipment that presses the veneers of the board into shape to give the deck the geometry that we want. There are tons of great mold manufacturers out there. They can be 3D printed, CNC'd, made from plastic, metal, wood. You could probably even DIY one out of styrofoam the same way you can for full-size boards. So, as I like to say, use what you got. The next piece of standard fingerboard building equipment is called a shaper block, and they look like this. A shaper block is a template for cutting your decks out of the blank once they've been pressed. These aren't 100% required. You can use paper templates and get good results. But if you want to make a lot of decks and want to keep the alignment straight, a shaper block makes the job much, much easier. That's it for specialty tools, but you'll also need some plain tools. You'll need a drill, something to rough cut the decks. I use tin snips. And something to refine the shape. I'm using a disc sander, but you can use sandpaper and elbow grease if you're on a budget. And there's one last thing, it can be really helpful to protect your mold from glue in some way. Personally, I'm still experimenting with this, but I've seen people use wax paper above and below the layup or coat the mold in packing tape. Do you got a technique that you like for this? Let me know if you do and why you like it. I'd love to know the thinking between the different approaches. Leave me a comment down below. With all that laid out, we can get started. The first thing to do is to cut the veneers so they fit into the press. You can get the length right from the press itself and then trim your stack of veneers to fit. Next, we're gonna prep our layup. Cool thing about fingerboards is, since there's such a large variety of hardwoods you can use, there are a lot of creative patterns you can make with the veneers. As long as you make sure to alternate between long and cross grain sheets, you've got a ton of freedom to experiment. Here my layup is cherry long grain on the outside, maple cross grains, and a walnut long grain in the center for contrast. It should look pretty cool in the end. Next, I'm gonna make myself a squeegee using some veneer cutoffs. This will be used to spread the glue in a moment. The packing tape both reinforces the wood so you get more mileage out of it and acts as a sort of non-stick surface for the glue.
Now I'm going to take a minute to do that mold protection prep. I'm trying out wax paper this time and cutting myself two sheets that are more than big enough to cover the inside surfaces of the mold. The pressing process can get a little messy, so it's a good idea to also take steps to protect your work surface too. Here I'm using packaging paper, but anything that'll stop the glue will work. All right, now it's time for the fun part, the layup. Grab your stack of five veneers. Have your mold ready in an open position and lay that first protective sheet down. Squeeze yourself out some glue and grab your first veneer. Use your squeegee to grab some of the glue and spread it over the veneer. Be sure to coat the whole surface. Any spots that are missing glue will become a weak point in the deck. Grab your next veneer and repeat the process. And repeat for all the veneers in your stack, alternating long grain and cross grain for a total of four glue seams. The top veneer in the layup is the top of your deck, so it's not going to need glue. Once that's done, move the layup over to your press. Make sure everything is aligned the way you want. Add that second protective layer. And the details for the next part will depend on what kind of mold and clamping system you're using, but add the top of your mold and clamp the dickens out of it. Then we must exercise patience, Grasshopper, because this baby needs to cure for 24 hours, or whatever the recommended cure time is for your glue. Once the glue is cured, we've got ourselves a foamy mess, but that's an artifact of how these glues work, and it's a sign that we've actually got good coverage. What step comes next, again, will depend on the type of mold that you're using. The presses that I make have an included drilling guide for the truck mounting holes, and it's best to use them now while everything is still secured and lined up. For other molds, the drilling comes a little later. Some molds out there will imprint the locations of the truck holes onto the blank, so you can be sure that you're drilling in the right place. But regardless of whether you're drilling before or after, at this point we can crack open the mold and take our first look at how the deck came out. In my case, I had some glue seep through the veneer and made a little bit of a mess, but the veneers of the deck itself are looking flat and smooth, so I think we're in good shape. That looks very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of shape, next we're gonna make use of our shaper block. The blocks have alignment pins that match with the bolt holes in the deck, and we can drop the drilled blank down on those pins and it'll be locked in place on the template. I know some of y'all out there use these shaper blocks as actual routing templates with a flush cut bit, and I can see that it works, but I also think you're a little nuts. I'm not comfortable getting my fingers so close to a router bit that's spinning. So in the future I'm going to be experimenting with a couple other solutions that to my mind seem a little bit more safe, but in the meantime, what I like to do is simply trace the deck shape onto the blank. Next, I rough cut the deck with some tin snips. This step is super imprecise and is mostly just to reduce the amount of sanding that needs to be done. Once the deck is rough cut, I move over to this little disc sander and I bring the edge down to the line I traced earlier to give me my final shape. And for now, I'm rounding my rails and cleaning up my decks using sandpaper, working up through the grits to get a smooth finish. 
I think there's got to be a more efficient way of doing this, but that's a set of experiments for another video. Let me know if you've got any ideas. And with that, our blank is looking real good. There's one last optional detail to address. A lot of the time, the mounting holes on fingerboard decks are countersunk. I've been puzzling over how to countersink such tiny holes, and here's what I've come up with for now. This. Wait, uh, uh, that's so small it's kind of hard to see. This. It's a teeny tiny conical burr that I got from McMaster Car. And this is a sort of combination collet and depth stop that I designed that can be chucked in a drill. The burr goes in the printed part, which gets put into the drill, and the pressure from the three jaw chuck flexes the printed part, clamping down on the collet and locking everything in place. I can use this arrangement to chamfer my bolt holes without a whole lot of effort or thought, and I gotta say, I'm pretty thrilled with the results. That is looking super clean. I'd be happy to add these little adapters to the shop, just let me know if you're interested. And that's how you make a fingerboard. With that countersinking step complete, we've got a finished deck that is begging for you to apply your artistic talents and make it look sick. And that's gonna be it for this one. If you're interested in the mold system I used in this video, you can get a hold of it for yourself over at goodrosecollective.com. Additionally, I just launched a pilot for street-style deck shapers with custom dimensions over on the site. I'll ask for your patience while I'm working out the kinks, but check it out and let me know what you think of the experience. It'd be cool to offer these in the shop long term. Huge shout out as always to the fine folks who support me over on Patreon. You are the thin layer of wax paper that keeps the mold that is this channel running clean and smooth. As always, I love having you along for the ride, so until next time, I'll see you soon.